Since the change of the political party in charge has not made a difference, who's really in charge? Someone is responsible, and it's important for those of us who love liberty and resent big brother government, identify the philosophic supporters who have the most to say about the direction our country is going. These are the neoconservatives of recent fame. Granted, they are talented and achieved a political victory that all policymakers must admire. But can freedom and the republic survive this takeover? That question should concern us. Neoconservatives are obviously in positions of influence and are well placed throughout our government and the media. The neoconservatives, a name they gave themselves, diligently worked their way into positions of power and influence. Above all else, they were not and are not conservatives dedicated to limited constitutional government. More recently, the modern-day neocons have come from the far left, a group historically identified as former Trotskyites. Liberal Christopher Hitchens has just recently joined the neocons, and it has been reported that he has already been to the White House as an ad hoc consultant. Many neocons now in position of influence in Washington can trace their status back to Professor Leo Strauss of the University of Chicago. Paul Wolfowitz actually got his Ph.D. under Strauss. Others closely associated with these views are Richard Pearl, Elliot Abrams, Robert Kagan, William Crystal. All are key players in designing our new strategy of preemptive war. Others include Michael Ledeen of the American Enterprise Institute, former CIA Director James Woolsey, Bill Bennett, Frank Gaffney, Dick Cheney, and Donald Rumsfeld. The godfather of modern-day neoconservatism is considered to be Irving Kristol, father of Bill Kristol. More important than the names of people affiliated with neoconservatism are the views they adhere to. Here is a brief summary of the general understanding of what neocons believe. They agree with Trotsky on permanent revolution, violent as well as intellectual. They are for redrawing the map of the Middle East and are willing to use force to do it. They believe in preemptive war to achieve desired ends. They accept the notion that the ends justify the means. They express no opposition to the welfare state. They are not bashful about an American empire. Instead, they strongly endorse it. They believe lying is necessary for the state to survive. They believe a powerful federal government is a benefit. They believe pertinent acts about how a society should be run should be held by the elite and withheld from those who do not have the courage to deal with it. They believe neutrality in foreign affairs is ill-advised. Force should not be limited to the defense of our country. They dislike and despise libertarians. Therefore, the same applies to all strict constitutionalists. They endorse attacks on civil liberties, such as those found in the Patriot Act, as being necessary. They unconditionally support Israel and have a close alliance with the Likud party. Various organizations and publications over the past 30 years have played a significant role in the rise to power of the neoconservatives. A product of the Bradley Foundation, the American Enterprise Institute led the neocon charge, but the real push for war came from the Project for a New American Century, another organization helped by the Bradley Foundation. This occurred in 1998 and was chaired by Weekly Standard editor Bill Stoll. They urged early on for war against Iraq, but were disappointed with the Clinton administration, which never followed through with its periodic bombings. Obviously, those bombings were motivated more by Clinton's personal and political problems than a belief in the neocon agenda. The money and views of Rupert Murdoch also played a key role in promoting the neocon views, as well as rallying support by the general population through his news corporation, which owns Fox News Network, the New York Post, and Weekly Standard. This powerful and influential media empire did more to galvanize public support for the Iraqi invasion than one might imagine. They have been amazingly successful in their efforts to control the debate over what Western values are and by what methods they will be spread throughout the world. 
It's of interest to note that some large Christian denominations have joined the neoconservatives in promoting preemptive war, while completely ignoring the Christian doctrine of a just war. The neocons saw and openly welcomed their support. Neoconservatism is not the philosophy of free markets and a wise foreign policy. Instead, it represents big government welfare at home and a program of using our military might to spread their version of American values throughout the world. If the neoconservatives retain control of the conservative limited government movement in Washington, the ideas once championed by the conservatives of limiting the size and scope of government will be a long forgotten dream. 